for you? Where's my Christians at? Where's my, where's my people that have been bought by the blood? Amen. It's been paid. Anybody full of the Holy Spirit? Come on. Anybody saved here? Anybody have a gift inside of them? Come on. The harvest is ready. The laborers are few. It's a complicated message because we oftentimes pray for the harvest and not pray for the laborers because then that prayer like bounces back on us. Have you ever been praying? I'm like, God, do that. And God's like, I already opened the door. Go and do it. Go and do it. <laughs> that's just me. Anyways, every once in a while you'll be praying and God's like, yeah, I got it. Now that, that's on you. Lord, I just saved my friend. Invite him to church. Lord, provide for that. Hey, go over and help him move. And sometimes God will just open up your heart and say, hey, I've opened the door. Now I'm anointing you to walk through it and go be with that person, preach the gospel, pray for them, and see heaven come to earth. Amen? Come on. He's a good God. He's good. He's good. This isn't hype. We're just a bunch of people saved by the very real Jesus. Amen. Grab your seats. Get your Bibles out. And uh, I got some work to do this morning. And so we're going to jump right to it and uh, roll the dice with our sex life. Amen? Some of you stayed home today. That's okay because you're like, I don't know. That means that sounds horrible and awkward. I'm going to stay home, maybe just receive this from the living room. That's okay. That's okay. Really, this is a message about value. I just wanted to put sex in there because every couple of years you need to talk about sex. And so we put sex into the title just to be controversial and cool. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, ultimately, we're talking about value this morning. And uh, sex is one of those things, really romance, friendship, anything to do in this vicinity of life is something that is utterly important. And I, I've seen it take out too many people. It's kind of one of those things that we, we don't talk about and in church. And even sometimes we'll get messages from parents, can I bring my kid? And what's interesting is like, unless your kid's four, three, I mean, they've heard everything we're going to say. If, if you can't talk to your kids, we've got bigger issues than we can even discuss this morning. The truth of it is, is to get things out of darkness and get people talking. So as your pastor, as, as your friend <laughs> in church, every once in a while, it's good to discuss things and even preach into things to bring light into some areas that we don't want to talk about because we act like the devil created sex. When God created sex, there's some, some Bible things to talk about. More importantly, I want to discuss value this morning. I want to discuss value. I think everybody is looking for value. Everybody is praying for value. Everybody wants to feel valuable. And I think there's a reason, I think there's a reason that we don't. And so that's really what I want to discuss today. But roll the dice with value doesn't sound that sexy. So we're going to roll the dice with God. You created me, a sexual being, a romantic, loving being that needs connection in different ways, friendship, romantically, Lord, intimately. God, help me walk according to your word. Amen? And so there's some things we're going to look at. Church at the River, 4th of July, are you coming? I need you to come. We need the church to come and fill up the beach and the river, bring your friends. Sometimes people go, oh, you church at the river, so you guys can kind of just kind of chill out on 4th of July. Actually, whenever we take church somewhere, just so you know, it's like twice as much work. So this isn't when Brandon was like, hey, I got a vision. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, okay, next 4th of July. I just see a 2022 on that vision. Uh, I need a little more time. Uh, just know that we're putting everything we got to do church at the river. We're bringing the worship team. We're bringing sound equipment. Um, I'm going to preach a Jesus gospel message. And uh, let's, so, let's go Jesus people revival on this and reach out. Fill up your car with some people and say we're going to the river. Amen. We'll be done at 1230. You got the whole day to barbecue with your friends and family. Amen. So church at the river. Someone said yes. All right. Let's go to the book of Judges chapter 6. And uh, we're going to roll the dice with our sex life and say, God, I'm not in control. You're in control. I give you my spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Amen? I need you to help me preach this this morning. And uh, I don't want to feel all alone. And uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was an Ophrah, which belonged to Joash. While his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press. Now, this has been our, our backdrop to talking about dysfunction. 
wheat in the wine press. I want to use, God, what you've given to me. I want to use it in function. Amen? I want to function. I want to be on mission. Some of us are in dysfunction, and we think we need a degree in dysfunction. You don't need a degree in dysfunction. You need a degree in function. So we're, we're, we're shifting into function. Amen? Amen? And so we need mission. Some of us are on the wrong mission, so we just need to redirect our mission. And then some of us need to value what God says and not what we feel. Amen? Are you with me? It's going to be a bumpy ride, so just, 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 just help. I'm helping you out here. I'm help, just, just, just buckle up, and we're going to get into the scriptures this morning. But the wheat in the wine press, so we're breaking the wheat in the wine press thinking, and I do not want to use friendships as wheat in a wine press to get something for me. Friendships were meant to be given to, to, to lay down our lives, amen? And, and romance was something to be given to, but are we using sex as a wheat in a wine press? Or do I need to discover what and why God made it? Or am I living according to what the enemy has given to me and I'm functioning according to a lie? Are we using church as a wheat in a wine press? Are you using church just to check a box and kind of just get a feel and kind of connect? The church is far bigger than wheat and wine press use. There, there is a wine press usage for church, for friendship, for faith, and for worship. And I'm telling you, the problem is probably a dysfunction in not using a something according to its designed purpose. And we are not valuing the purpose of the butter knife. It's not a screwdriver. It's meant for butter. And the moment you put it into the butter tray, we're all a little happier. Amen. Are you ready? All right, come on. We're having church. Revival is here. This is not a normal message. I ask you to put all of your thoughts to the shelf. I take, ask you to take every thought captive. I ask you to make this place holy. You're not holy. He's holy. Separation is, is not from. It's unto. Holiness is separation unto God. I'm going to separate my spirit, soul, and body to God for just about 30, 35 minutes and let him do what only he can do. Amen? Amen? This might save some of you. More importantly, it might save the young people. I need this message to get out to young people. If they're not here and you didn't bring them, forward this, this, this message. This might save their lives. Amen? I am who I am by the? Come on, help me, church. I need you. I need you. I am who I am by the? Grace of God. By the grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. Not by what I've done, but by what he's done. But what I do sometimes determine what I have to do. My cousin shot someone because he thought he was a gangster and he was high in high school and now he is in prison. Our purity is the same. It comes from God. Our holiness comes from God. But he has a prison ministry. So this is real. There's grace and there's truth. I need you to tell your story true. Stop lying. I did that, you know, I sold that and I did that and I did that and then it was all God. Stop your kids need you to tell the story true. If something wasn't God, own up to it and stop spiritualizing it. We also need grace in this room because we've all jacked up. And so the problem when preaching about certain things is condemnation comes. And I need you to receive fresh grace and fresh forgiveness today. When Jesus came, he came in grace. Grace is first and truth. Okay, so let there just be a washing today. I don't want to preach to condemned people. I don't want the words in my mouth to condemn you. I want them to set you free and bring direction even more than correction so that you can walk in freedom. The truth sets you free, amen? And so then we can set the other generation free. We need to set young people free. Wheat in the wine press. Amen. Let's get into it this morning right now. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for truth. We thank you that we can walk in freedom. I thank you for this church, the best church on the planet. We thank you for those listening and watching. We thank you for the season of transition. Lord, you brought the people out of Egypt and, and, and into the promised land. We're coming out of Egypt, and now we need to possess the promised land. We need to go into a new season. Lord, you're doing a new thing. We thank you for new ideas. We thank you for new purity and new holiness a new word, a new family, a new life, a new faith, Lord, a new church, a new, new, new identity. Come on, new relationships and friendships and new love in our marriages and new focus in our singleness. God, help us all out whatever season we're in. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, how good is that song? Doing a new thing? So good. 
It's so good. Well, I was, uh, I was in high school, and I was in Texas. All my, where's all my Texans? Okay, no Texans. All right. <laughs> it's like you're preaching at Camus, brother. Um, it's, I, know, I know. Every once in a while, there's a Texan. Proud Texans are Texans. Okay. So um, we're, we're in a prayer meeting. We're in a prayer meeting, and the Holy Spirit's moving, and presence of God, and it's just good things are happening, and um, it's just good. It's just good old-fashioned prayer meeting. We're just, whoo. It's just everybody's just feeling, getting filled up, and it's all good. And I just, this young lady was right next to me, and I remember just like praying and praying. I just look over there, and she's like, rrr, rrr, just doing some like anger things. And sometimes you don't know if someone's manifesting, if it's the flesh, the devil, or the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you just, whew, I don't know. Because some people just get a lot of flesh. And that's okay. That's why charismatics get a bad name. Every once in a while, the Holy Spirit moves up and goes, ah, whoo! And they start running around, and they get their flag, and they poke someone in their eye, and they're like, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Can the flag just be in the back? We just decency in order. We don't want to hurt anybody. Um, no, but sometimes we all get excited. I get excited. And uh, sometimes there's flesh. Sometimes there's uh, a lot of Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, I, the, the, the times I've fallen over, I promise you, um, I didn't have a choice. I don't know how that works, but the Holy Spirit just poof, knocked me over. And if I would have hit somebody, I hit a coffee table once. And sometimes I hit somebody, and it's like, I don't know. I just, I did not choose that. The Holy Spirit can't, came on me in power. And, well, this one was a little different. I looked over, and she was like, she had this, uh, this look of darkness and evil. And I was like, whoo. I figured if I'm going to talk about sex, let's talk about demons and sex. Amen. I figured just get it. Demon. You go home and say, hey, I had the pastor talk about today. Demons and sex. Like, okay. Okay, it's a good Sunday to miss. All right. Um, so she was like giving me this stare. I'm like, whoo. Okay, okay. And we were just kind of, Lord, I just bless, you know, whatever her name was. Just bless her, Lord. And she and I, I kid you not, she was just a little, little orange, red-headed, cute little, you know, thing. And it, this voice, just like, like, just, just like, like Dolby sound, kind of a, whoa. Like, okay, that, that doesn't seem right. So we started praying for her, and her, her, her stomach started moving. Like poltergeist-style stuff. And I, I remember... Like, at whatever I was, 16, 17, being kind of like, woo, kind of like, we didn't have cell phones back in the day, but I would have, like, you know, taken a picture and recorded it and gone back to school and been like, you don't believe? You don't believe? I mean, I, with that, that her, her stomach was rolling. It was doing some funky stuff. Luckily, we had some good church leadership that said, you know what, we're just going to pray for her. We're going to cast out this demon. Because a lot of us, we are, we are fully distracted by the devil. Some of us are kind of love darkness, it's just in the sense of it's curious, especially when our faith is little, and then the devil does something, and you're like, whoa, that's awesome. Well, okay, yeah, I understand that maybe your faith is weak, and so something real, all of a sudden, you're starting to realize, oh, the kingdom of darkness is real. Let's be clear, the kingdom of darkness is very real. The kingdom of darkness is very real. And can I just be, just, just, just for the record, there's only two kingdoms? There's only two kingdoms? Okay, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Okay, a lot of people treat this like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, there's like 50 kingdoms. It's like, which kingdom are you from? I am from the north. No, there's two, there's like two kingdoms. You have to understand everything is either dark or light. And I don't have a funny story for you, so I'll just cut right to the chase. That, 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 that you do not need a degree in what you think you need a degree in. You do not need a degree in dysfunction. You don't need a degree in the devil. Now, you might understand some things about your journey or someone else's journey, but I don't need to understand everything that happened to this young lady. I, I just need to know that in the name of Jesus, okay, in the name of Jesus, but what happens is we get distracted. So our leader says, turn around. Don't let the angel of light distract you. He's not that cool. He's just tormenting her. She just opened herself up. That's why when you cast out a demon, you got to sweep the house. That's just soul healing, according to the word of God. Just get right. You don't need to get perfect. Just get right. You opened yourself up to some kind of Ouija board or some kind of thing. All you did is just say, because see, the devil does not have the power over you when you're bought by the blood of Jesus. He is Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. He is attracted. He's the Lord of the dung heap. That's biblical. What that means is he's attracted to garbage. And if you don't have any garbage, 
garbage, then there's no flies. So you don't got to worry about it. If you're not inviting evil into your life, you don't even got to worry about the devil. And so we turned around and we asked some leaders just in the name of Jesus. Now, again, it's not a magic formula. It just takes just some prayer. There's some process. But you need to know less about what you're fighting and you need to know more about the name of Jesus. I don't need to know every name of every devil and every dysfunction. Could you imagine though? That's kind of how we act. There's a Freemason spirit around here. There's a witchcraft spirit. I got some people that build a house on something, and there, there's, some, there's some ancient burial grounds. And it's like, okay, it's fine. You know, we got to break the spirit of this witchcraft. Then they'll discover there was some human sacrifice a thousand years ago. Okay. Could you imagine if you had to understand everything that you were fighting? You don't. All you have to know is there's two kingdoms, and that don't need to necessarily understand everything that you're fighting in some seven-year generational curse of insecurity and divorce and debauchery and which it does. You need to know the name that is above every name. It doesn't matter what you're up against. You 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 know the name of Jesus, and so they in the name of Jesus. They cast out the devil. Talk to her a little bit. Help her understand what took place. I'm not saying you don't need to journey with people and have conversations. I'm just saying a lot of us are way too distracted by the devil. We're so intrigued. And there's a lot of books written about all kinds of stuff, like one verse. Man, if you got one verse in your book, I'm just saying, it's probably a whole lot of you. And it might be a lot of good stuff. A lot of people do spiritual mapping. They do all this stuff. And there is something to the history of cities, the history of families. I just be careful because to me, there's a whole lot of unknown. And I don't like that. There's a whole lot of darkness. And so if there's some light, that's cool. But I want to stay in the camp of what God called me to know. And I'm not called to know everything. I'm actually called to know the thing that I'm called to know. They, 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 the Pharisees wanted to get that, that blind man pigeonholed into a corner and say, where is he? What is he probably? Is he staying there? Is he, what's it, what's it? And he's like, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is what he's done in me. I need to stay biblically in my lane because the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 10, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Just look at this emphasis. I'm t- this is going to bless you. All I'm telling you is there's a shift that needs to come in your mission and your value and your function this morning. Let go of some things. You do not need to know why that, that, that there's seven generations of divorce in your family. There might be some interesting conversations to have. There might be some knowledge. There might be some vision there. But I'm telling you, there's more in what God wants to give you in functioning in healthy relationship and communication. Just like we talked about the money. He wants to get you around real money so you can discover the counterfeit. We love to know all the counterfeit. Is this counterfeit from the Russian mafia? Is this counterfeit from the Italian mafia? Is this counterfeit from Monopoly? Is this counterfeit from the hood in New York? Is it God said, let it go. Quit being so consumed with the work of darkness and dysfunction and sin. I want you to come into light and I want you to know some things that you need to know. You could discover every dysfunction in your family and still not have what it takes to put a a stand on the word of God for what he has for your life. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You see the perspective? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That's your job. That doesn't look like a demon busting. Where are all the demons? Jesus never went around looking for demons. He went around on purpose, mission, and valuing what the Father said to him. The demons sought him out. And when they sought him out, he said, in the name, get out. That, that's what he said. We go around sometimes looking to break every demonic thing. Let's say, excuse me, get back on vision. Get back on mission. They'll be looking for you. And when they find you, now listen, if you come into your house, you buy a new house, and you send some bad juju, or you need, do what you need to do. Put some oil. But understand, whatever you do is in faith. All around the name. That, that's what it's, in, it's the blood. If you want to put the oil, you want to get the worship team over, the main thing is what you're really doing is where two or three are gathered, he is there. He, he inhabits the praises of his people. So what you're really doing is you're standing on the word of God, declaring heaven to earth, declaring this place is God. Everywhere I go, because he's in me, everywhere I put my feet is mine. It doesn't matter where I go, into Africa, into Japan, into Buddhism, into Islam, into Freemason, into it doesn't matter where I go, everywhere I go, he goes with me and the kingdom of light dispels darkness. I'm sick and tired of a church being distracted by the devil. The devil is a liar and every knee will bow, every demon will cast out in the
the name, in the name. That's authority. That's authority. The devil, I think the greatest lie is that he has convinced us that he doesn't even exist. And so when we discover he does, we're like, whoo. I heard this roar, 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 out of this little girl. You should have been there. Get out. Not time for you. Get out. Okay, two kingdoms. And I spent way too much time researching the witchcraft in her family and the music she listened to and the drugs she did. Yeah, there's some things that will open you up. So you got to discover how to, mm, but it ain't that, it ain't that complicated. You know when you opened yourself up. Shut it down. Cast it out. Give some prayer. In the name, you got to get around the name. I cast out a lot of demons. I went on a lot of mission trips. There's a lot of demons in America, but they hide. You just got to get around the name. You got to get around the name. You notice there's not a book about the devil in the Bible? A lot of us are like, man, I wish we knew more about the devil. No, you don't. I wish there was a book. You know the biggest book is about praising the name of Jesus? That's what you need to get good at. Everywhere you go, he's doing a new thing. Wherever you go, he's doing a new thing. Everybody's demon busting. And there's a witchcraft spirit over here. And there's a Freemason. And there's a seven-generation warlord of the KKK. You're boring me. I'm 44 years old next Thursday. Maybe God will give me 50 more. With every breath, I'd rather lift up the name. I'd rather lift up. I'd rather give glory. I'm done giving glory to a lesser power that has only robbed and taken. I'm here to put value back in God. In the beginning, my Bible says, God. <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, of principalities and powers against the rules of this dark age, spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. We spend too much time. Is this, a, is this a principality? Is this a power? Who cares? Take up the armor of God that you can withstand in the evil day, having done all stand. That's the posture of spiritual warfare. <laughs> I'm secure. I'm loved. I'm blood bought. No demon. There's no name. There's no witchcraft. I don't care. You, I, I, if I got to deal with you, I got to deal with you. But I'm just saying, I'm, 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 I know, I know that God, that, that, that God is above. I'm not going to give you glory. I'm not going to make this equal. Sometimes I'm like, oh, really praying for that. Just walk in it. Yeah. The authority. Execute justice in the name. Stand there for, gird your waist with truth. Breastplate of righteousness. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to know above anything else. I'm not saying God won't give you some insight into great grandma on some crazy things that she did so you can help shut it down in your family. I'm saying the majority of what you do, though, is this. You teach your kids to put on the, the armor of God. And it's not, a, it's not a Sunday school class. It's faith. It's gospel. Prayer. Check this out in verse 19 and pray for me. That utterance may be given to me, that it may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. That's what he's saying my mission is. My mission is to preach the gospel, not to discover every demonic stronghold in Rome. You don't think Rome had some demons? Paul's like, pray for me that I can go into Rome and preach the gospel because I'm on mission. Whether I'm going to Rome, whether I'm going to the Colosseum, or I'm going to work, my job is the same. I need boldness to proclaim, for which I'm an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. What is this? It's a mission. I'm on a mission to function. This is from the Great Commission. He says to them, go into all the world. Go. Go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature, all creation. Preach. Preach. Function. You're called to preach. You're called to proclaim. That's why you're wrestling right now. Because you think it's a wrestle. It's not. You're light everywhere you go. Proclaim. Proclaim. Preach. To every, every, everyone. 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 Buddhist. Islam. Worship, uh, Satan worshipers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they worship. It doesn't matter what they serve. It doesn't matter how many demons they have. My job is to walk in there and preach the gospel. 
He who believes, baptize them. Who does not believe, they're condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, cast out demons. He doesn't say you need to know the name of every demon. He said you need to know my name. Know my name. Get to use my name in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You hearing me? In the name of Jesus. Function. Function. And this is what the Father did. This is what the Father did in the garden. He, he finds them. and He takes off the fig leaves. He uncovers and he covers. This is, this is what the Father did. He, he, he didn't sit there and drill down on the fig leaves. It doesn't matter what fig leaves you're dealing with. You're taking it off and you're putting on Christ. You're taking off and you're putting on. We are cover, uncovering and covering people. And, and the focus, though, is what we're covering them with. We're covering them with the blood. We're covering them with grace. We're covering them with truth. You see that? That's function. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off. I'm not going to spend too much time on the fig leaves because I just got to get that off of you. I just got to get that, that spirit off of you. I just got to get that mentality, that, that thing off of you and then get on truth and peace and joy and worship and church and function and life and love and vulnerability and communication. Are you with me? I got I to uncover and then cover. This is the spirit of God. This is the spirit. How good is your God? When he shows up in the garden, he finds people that jacked up all of, of paradise. And he says, I'm going to, okay, where are you? He finds them. And then he just gets off what they did. He just gets off. They partnered with Satan. He just gets it off. And then he covers them. He just covers them. See, a lot of times you don't even know when the anointing comes on you. You don't even know what he's uncovering. He just get it off of you because the focus, the focus is, is the sacrifice of the animal and the clothing that he puts on you. And then the prophecy that he gives you about the seed of a woman. You don't even sometimes know how beautiful the blessing of the presence of God is on your life. That's what he wants the focus to be is be on the blessing. Focus on the anointing. Sometimes you'll know what he breaks off of you, and sometimes you won't. You'll just be walking in freedom, and you don't even need to know. And that's why Paul said, just let it go. Just forget what's behind you and press forward to what God is doing. He's doing a new thing. He might show you some keys to some understandings of why the divorce happened, but more importantly, he wants you to get a hold of the new thing that he's covering you with, the new faith, the new anointing, the new grace, the new presence. He said, I want you to know me. I want you to know me. You're not going to know everything. I want you to know me. He covers. He blesses. And at the same time, he is breaking dysfunction. But he doesn't spend too much time on it. Because there's a spirit behind the fall. See, the original sin has everything built into it. We, we, we stop believing in God. We stop emphasizing his word. We stop emphasizing trust. And, and behind the fall, see God's healing, he's covering, he's modeling, so this is how you do it. You uncover, you cover, you cover, you cover. I don't want you to sit there and dissect your whole life on the fig leaves. No, no, just get them off. In the name of Jesus, just get them off and then cover, cover, cover. And at the same time, God, God, is, God is revealing the fact that, that the, 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 the purest form of, of evil is, is, is not the clown from It, is not Freddy Cougar. It, it's, I mean, just that, that, that original sin, original sin, original sin. The enemy gets in there and says, it, it, it's not a, it, what, what did God say? What? No, 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 you're not going to, no, 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 you're not, no, 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 that's, uh, you're not going to, no, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Well, what, what's he saying? He's saying, he's saying, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Oh, serving God, so you go to church, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Reading the Bible, oh, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Giving, tithing, oh, it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Will you pray? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's what you're up against this morning is, is, is it doesn't matter whether you pray. It doesn't matter whether you give your testimony. It doesn't matter whether you read your Bible. It's all good. The original lie that Satan got into paradise was it doesn't matter. And if you can see the devaluing of the word and the devaluing of faith and the devaluing of functioning on mission according to what God values and we put ourselves as God and said, well, it doesn't really matter. And we partner with the enemy and 
That's why this morning we got to put value back in the word of God. We got to put value back into church. It matters. It matters whether you read your Bible or not. It matters whether you preach or not. It matters whether you walk in light. It matters whether you lift up the name or you lift up another name. It matters what you do with your family. It matters whether you pray. It matters whether you worship. It matters. Oh, I'm preaching better than your amen and me. It matters. The devil is a liar. That's what we're up against. That's what you're sensing from me, that the enemy has devalued sex. He's devalued it. So a whole generation can be addicted to someone's daughter naked on their screen, and they can just, even the language, you hear the language? You hear the language? You catch your teenagers making out? It was just kissing. Oh, just. When did the word just cozy up to my wife's wonderful, soft lips? Sneaky little snake. Just kissing. We were just making out, Mom. Okay, you're right. That guy was just like licking a popsicle. We let the devaluing of sex come into our garden. And it's time to kick the snake out. But all of us are too condemned to do it. And that's why this morning, whether you get anything I say, you got to get grace. Grace is always first. So that you can stand on the word of God. Whether you did it or you didn't do it. It doesn't matter necessarily according to who you are. Now, you had to pay some penalty, but you need to tell your kid, I paid some penalties, I did some stuff, and I had to do some stuff. So it's good to avoid that. But when it comes to purity and holiness and what God wants for me, it's something given to me. But we're too condemned. So we allow sex to just be, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's just kissing. But it was just, they didn't really fully, you know, so we're good. Talk about dysfunction. I'm tired of Satan winning. I'm sick. You think I want to preach this? No, I've been fighting all week. The devil. It's not a big deal. Oh, you're pregnant. It's okay, you don't need to pray. It's good. You don't need to give your testimony. You just oh the lot. You don't you don't need to tell your testimony. You just being just being an example. He twists scripture. You don't need to pray. You're too busy. You're saved by grace. Oh, you are. He twists scripture. Did he say you could eat every tree? You don't need to read the Bible. It's such legalism. It's so much legalism. He gets in there and he twists scriptures, and all he's trying to do is say it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. And he has devalued the word. He has devalued faith. He's devalued worship. He's devalued church. So even church becomes wheat in a wine press. Where the bride isn't even gathering together to lift up the name. We come in here to get filled instead of coming in here filled to do our job as priests. You're a priest. You're in the work of the ministry. Oh, is there, I, I see the church gathering coming already filled. If you need to get filled, get filled. But I'm telling you, there's a day coming where you've already been in the word and you've already been in the spirit and you've already been proclaiming the name of and you value this as a wine press and you're tired of threshing wheat in this wine press and you say the church is gathering, the church is gathering to lift up the name so that the glory of God, God is everywhere but his glory isn't. And so when people gather, the glory of God falls in the name the mixture of faith I believe people are healed demons are cast out people are baptized and God is glorified the church I'm tired of using the church as a wine press for threshing wheat it's time to use the wine press for wine and the threshing floor for wheat I'm tired of using faith to survive we ought to use faith in the function and mission and value that it was created for 
want to function. Value means something that it's worth. What you're fighting right now is the original sin. It's not a big deal. Whether I forgive that person, it's not a big deal. You do what you believe is a big, what you are doing right now in your life is the sum total of what you value. You value sweeping things under the rug more than conflict. You don't think reaching out to that person matters, so you don't. I'm here to tell you that the enemy has lied to us and we have partnered with it and we need to break the spirit behind every sin, every perversion, is that it doesn't matter. Oh, it does. It's a big deal. Worshiping God is a big deal. Church is a big deal. My family is a big deal. Forgiveness is a big deal. Prayer is a big deal. Institute what God has asked you today. Let go of yesterday. Today is the day of salvation. And it matters. You get a second chance. You can reach out to that person. You can preach. You can say, hey. What's our main job? It's to preach the gospel. Oh, I love the wine press. I love the wine press because it's Jesus' first miracle. Wine. Wine is pleasure. Wine is Jesus' first miracle. It's the wedding. It matters. It matters. It matters. It matters. Jesus came in grace and truth. What happened to the church is a bunch of pastors that didn't live the life they wanted to live started to preach holiness and purity. And so in doing so, they did a heavy-handed message of legalism really condemning a bunch of people. And so by that, I need to say I'm sorry. We need to say we're sorry because we were supposed to bring grace true first. Grace was supposed to be first. You're washed, you're forgiven, you're, you're loved. And even this morning, wherever you are at, you need to understand he could not love you any more than he loves you right now. We need to put the value back in grace. We need to put the value back in church. Church is supposed to be a house of prayer. This is supposed to be a hospital. This ought to be a place where broken people like all of us come to, to get grace. It can't be earned. It can only be received. Grace is first. First. Say grace is first. You ought to extend grace to people in your life first. Before you bring truth, you got to bring grace. And don't make them earn it. Don't say, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. That's not grace. That's called conditional love and reciprocity, which a lot of relationships do need. Relationships need reciprocity. But I'm talking about this morning, if you're a preacher of the gospel, you got to give grace first. And then truth. Grace allows me to walk in truth. There is truth. The steps, the walk, it's a walk. So someone doesn't just say, Isaac, how did you get your marriage there? I don't just go, well, it's just grace, you know. No, grace and truth. So I can tell someone how I got there. So it's truth. Grace allows me to walk in truth. There's an order. That's all I'm trying to say. There's an order, amen? There's an order. There's an order, there's a walk, there's a how did I get here? We have to teach young people, church. We gotta teach young people. Don't awaken love until it's time. Don't awaken love until it's time. Most of us just awaken love and we all, oh, this is cool, this feels good. No, we need to teach young people to shut it down. Now maybe you never shut it down. Let grace wash you this morning because you need to teach your young people to shut it down. No, 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 don't, no, no, shut it down. Learn self-control. You got to learn that you are in control of every emotion and every hormone and every thought in your body. We got to quit preaching this. I'm a beast mentality. Sorry, I didn't know what happened. My pants just fell off. No, you got, I don't care if you're 50 years old. You've never learned self-control. This is the time to now value the order and the grace and the truth of the word of God. I'm putting value value back in the fact that God knows what he's doing there's value in the word of God and I'm going to shut it down don't awaken love until it's time oh there's timing yeah yeah timing matters to God timing matters to God absolutely there's this great word called lasciviousness oh the enemy is such a liar Woo! but the Bible doesn't say anything about what to do before marriage or what to do if you're not married to someone yes it does there's a great old King James word called lasciviousness Learn it, lasciviousness, lasciviousness. It means don't stir up something that cannot be fulfilled. So you know, you know, you know, come on young people, you know, you know. 
You know, don't tell me there's not a standard. The devil is a liar. He came in and said, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. You're going to marry. No, no, no. God created marriage and then he put sex in it. He created marriage and he put sex inside of it to protect it. That's not condemnation. That's called truth. It's called grace. And so as young people, we're touching. We're touching. Yeah, but you know when you're touching, you're like, I really want to get naked. Yeah, that's lasciviousness. You just stirred up something that can't be fulfilled. No, if you can kiss, parents, I'm helping you out. If you can kiss, and you're like, cool, okay. But you know the kiss gets the engine going. Yeah, that's lasciviousness. And God said, don't do that. Why? Why? Oh, to be and learn self-control. What do we wrestle with our whole life? Is we can't do what we want to do self-control maybe god gave us sex in a way even in this fallen world to learn some self-control shut it down don't awaken love until it's time avoid sexual morality don't do sexual acts with anybody you're not married to that's it that's it we need a sexual revolution we need a sexual revolution i i i i, I hate that on facebook i get these ads you know frisky Girls, frisky girls looking for fun. Like frisky girls looking for a father. They're not like, no, well, we, we have all, and then, and then somehow marriage became the ball and chain. I think we need to flip the script and get sex out of a youth culture and say, no, 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 no. That's not what God has for you. We gotta put sex back in marriage. Roll the dice, young people, with your purity. Married couples have more sex. Roll the dice. Sex is in marriage. Let's make marriage great again. Come on, who am I preaching to? Oh, the greatest lie was the sex talk. Like sex can be brought down to one talk. And we don't talk about sex. The two things that we need to talk about. We need to talk and we need to talk about sex. But it hides out in darkness and shame and guilt. Come on, women. Do we need to talk more? Yeah. Come on, men. Do we need more sex? But we don't, and so we fight. But we need to value what God values. We need to value. Wait. 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 Date. Mate. Procreate. That's the that's the that's the order. Now at any point you mess up in that order, there's grace to realign. But we need to teach people to wait. Oh, it's so cute, they're 14 and they're dating. That's not cute. <laughs> it's teaching them not to wait. Make friendships when you're young, learn how to build friendships with the opposite sex. Every guy's like, I don't know, all the girls want to hang. Of course they do, dork. Learn to build relationships with the same sex. Come on, I'm not done preaching. Learn to build relationships and then date. Yeah, learn how to honor someone of the opposite sex. Learn how to go out and eat. Learn how to connect. Absolutely. And then one day when you believe that person's the right person, you stand before God. And this is why marriage is important in all cultures whether you understand it or not. It's because it's an institution of God that matters. God created marriage. That's why there's an assault on marriage. Because you stand before God, and if you don't believe this, then you're saying that timing doesn't matter. And timing does matter. See, when you value what God values, you begin to feel valuable. See, when you, when you stand before God and that other person, and you say, I have forsaken all others, you're not trying to marry them, because she's pregnant? You're not trying to marry them because you're horny? No, you marry them because you compare them to all the other women in the world and you say, I forsake all of them. And you know, babe, that I have controlled my, myself. So when I stand before you and God, you know I mean it when I say I forsake all others. I choose you because it's you. And in sickness or in death or in poverty, I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. 
I choose you. I choose you. And what you're doing is you're saying, this time period before sex matters. So that for three to six months, I can nope, nope, nope. I have so many dudes coming to my office, but dude, she wants it so bad. I just, I gave it to her. Shut up, shut up. Be a man. No, I love you too much. I love you too. The genius of God, get this, get this, get this. The next generation needs to hear this. I don't know one believes this anymore. That's why I gotta preach it. Because God said, if you value this for three to six months, I will put such trust in your marriage that every time you're out with the boy shooting pool, she's not blowing up your phone because she trusts you. Everywhere you go when you're not with her, you've already proven to her that when you're with her, you can handle yourself, you love her, you don't lust her, you're not trying to get her into the bed. No, you honor her, you love her, you value her, and for six months, you are valuing God, you're valuing your wife, you're valuing her, you're valuing your family. All I'm saying is it's time to put value in what God says he values. Is that why a generation says, I don't feel loved, I don't feel valued? It's because we've devalued everything, even the institution of marriage, even the timing of the wedding. I'm telling you, it's the enemy devaluing and saying it doesn't matter. And today we put value back in a church by saying it matters, it matters, it matters, it matters. Oh, it matters. Put the value back into marriage. Put value back into sex. It's so valuable. It's such a gift. Value it. Value the timing. Value the process. Would you value it this morning? Would you value it this morning? Can we preach to the next generation how valuable they are? So when our young ladies walk the streets and spend time on social media, they know who they are. They're not confused by a cat call or a message, by something lower, by something down here. They brought their value. Can we get the ladies in this generation's value back up and say you matter? You're valuable to God. You're valuable to me. I don't want to take from you. I want to give. I want to give. I want to love. I want to value. I want to value marriage. I want to value his word. I want to value church. I want to value sex. I value God's word. I value it. 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 And when we value, we feel valuable. When we value it, when we value it, we feel valuable. I don't care how far your young person has walked. I don't care how far this generation has walked. They've walked in darkness and it is time for a church to receive the grace of God and walk in truth. They need the light that comes from the word of God. There's a reason they don't feel valuable and it might not because they get enough flowers. It might be because they don't value the word and timing of God. And God raises up a church in this generation to say, I I've got some truth. I've not lived it all, but there is a God. His name is Jesus. I value the name of Jesus. I live for God. I go to church. I'm saving myself for marriage because that's where sex is, and sex is awesome. I'm tired of the enemy devaluing sex in a generation. We value it, we honor it, and then all of a sudden you'll see value return. You'll see value return. You'll see people walk around going, I know who I am. But this morning, if you need value back in your life, just receive. He wants to wash you from the front to the back. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. This is not condemnation. This is truth. Grace first. Let his grace wash you this morning. Let his grace wash you this morning, wherever you're at, wherever you're at. The reason you don't want to tell your kids the truth is because you feel like you haven't walked in it. But guess what? None of us have. Let the grace of God pour into this place. Oh, I sense the grace. I sense the grace. I sense the Holy Ghost washing. I sense the Holy Ghost. If you're at home right now, receive the Holy Spirit. Let him wash you. Let him wash you. Let him wash you. Let him wash you. Let him wash you.
the valley. You're not damaged. You're not damaged. You're not dirty. You're not condemned. He wants you to see the value. Today is the day of salvation. God, I want to know my value. I value your word. I value grace. I value truth. I value it. Oh, just receive the Holy Spirit. He's washing you. He's showing you your value. He goes, I love you. I, I died for you. I don't want you to walk in darkness. I'm waiting for the next Christian to be on a reality TV show that doesn't, when asked, why are you sleeping around, that they don't just say, oh, I'm a Christian. Tell them. Tell them. Preach. Preach. Say, I'm not going to sleep around. It doesn't, it, it's dysfunctional. I want to function. God made sex. I'm looking for some young people to tell them why. Not just that they're a virgin. We're not looking for an army of virgins walking around condemning people. I'm waiting for some young people to know who they are to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, setting captives free, saying, I'm telling you, God made me, God made you. I don't want to take from you. I want to give to you. And the opposite sex, we stop flirting, we stop lusting, we stop taking and we start giving. We start giving. When you know how valuable you are, see, when you're devalued, you need to take. But when you're valuable, you know who you are and you can give people what makes you valuable. Be a preacher of the gospel. Be a preacher of the gospel. Jesus. If you need some value this morning, if you need some value this morning, just open up your heart and let God touch you even right now. Let him fill you even right now. God, show us our value. 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 Us our value. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, break every chain, break every guilt, break every shame, break everything of the past, God, we walk today in light. We walk today in light. Lord, we walk today valuing what you value. The devaluing of the word of God took the value out of believing God's word. And so the, the effect of devaluing is you no longer value what God has said. And so we stand as God in a mix. We don't have to walk in that. We don't have to walk in that. God wants to show you the value of communication. He wants to show you the value of your life. And when you sense the value, you have no fear of functioning and being on mission with your family. He's restoring families, I believe. He's restoring families, I believe. He's restoring families. Parents, he's giving you the words. He's giving you the anointing to rebuild, renew, revitalize that family in Jesus' name. Guys, if you need some prayer, come on up here. We have to close this morning. If you need some prayer, come on down. Let God just finish what he's doing in your heart and your life. We love you so much. Let God just put some value. Let God put some value. Let God put some value. If you need to find a place, just let God finish. I know God's begun to work in your heart this morning. Let him finish. Let him finish. Write it down. Just linger in the presence of God and let him finish putting his value on you this morning in Jesus' name.